Glad to be back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We come to you each week talking about the very biggest topics, the issues that are facing you in retirement here in the 21st century. We know retirement has changed dramatically, and that's why the foundation offers courses throughout the year to help you get ready, get ready for this next stage of life. It does take education and Kirk and Paul are committed to helping you learn what you need to know to enter retirement with confidence. We're going to talk talk to you about those courses that are at local universities. The foundation sets these up conveniently for you at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. We'll give you the phone number here as we kick things off. If you know you're ready to get registered, call today, 800-240-8981, or you can go online, retirementplanningedu.com. We'll be telling you about these courses throughout our show today. Kirk, Paul, it's great to be back with you. We want to talk about something today that I know will be all ears for our listeners, how to be more successful in the market. Are you really going to break that down for us today? Well, we are with a little bit of a spin, a little bit of a twist, of course, because we focus on retirement, right? And that's the purpose of the Retirement Education Foundation. Um, It's how to be successful in the markets and how to be successful in retirement. And I uh, I think our listeners are going to be shocked because it's very different than what they have been conditioned and promoted to believe by the financial service industry. I I know, maybe we start with what it isn't. It isn't going to be, performance and success in retirement isn't going to be driven by average rates of returns. It's not. It's not specifically just what you invest in. I know people are going to be shocked, but and it's what we talk about in the class. It's it's really about when do you take your income from which accounts to minimize something called sequence of return risk, minimize taxes. That is what's going to drive your success in performance in retirement and in the markets, right? You're going to learn average rate of return once you start pulling money out of the out of your investments doesn't count anymore. It doesn't it doesn't mean anything. We're going we're gonna to talk about examples where you can have an average 10% rate of return over 20 years and take out 5% a year to live on, and you will run out of money in 17 years. I know that's hard for you to understand, but it's what are the market conditions when you're pulling money out, not your average rate of return. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think it's, it's really a different – it goes back to your relationship with money changes as, as we get older, right? And it changes – as we get closer to retirement and, and, and because our relationship with money changes, our strategies, how we think about, about this next phase has to be different, right? I mean, when you're working and you get a paycheck, right? Your relationship with money is very different than when you're not working and you don't get a paycheck, right? I mean, it's, you know, people always like to say that in 2008, they didn't panic, right? And we hear this every time we sit down with somebody, right? Everybody says that. They're so proud. They didn't panic, but they were working, Right. Ask anybody who wasn't working what it felt like in 2008. Well, Paul, we say this, I think, almost every show. We know what happened during COVID. Right. Those people over 65 years old, 35% of you panicked in March during COVID because no one else was sending you a paycheck. You were sending yourself a paycheck out of your own investments. And when we start to have volatility, your emotions will drive your success in the markets. That's probably the number one variable. And timing of when you take money from which accounts, not taking less when the market is down, that isn't, that isn't what retirement is supposed to be. But if you have a plan, this is why we teach these classes, you don't have to change your spending habits based upon performance in the markets or what's going on in the economy. You can continue spending as you always had been, just knowing the strategies to make sure you don't outlive your money. And so... We teach these classes and have been teaching these classes at major universities for almost 10 years now. It was the purpose of the forming of the the charity, the Retirement Education Foundation. It is an eight-hour course. It costs money to attend. It's a $29 donation to charity. It's inexpensive for eight hours of education, a 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register for one of these classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. You know, it's interesting. We, we, we always say, Kirk, that, that your relationship with money changes 
as we age and, and, and as we enter retirement. If, you know, we say this. It's not easy, I think, for people to imagine what something's going to be like unless you're in it, right? They I don't mean, get it. They it, don't it, even understand what you're saying. They, I promise. I, I, know, I know they don't. So, you know, I keep thinking, what's, you know, how, how, do, how do you help people appreciate that their anxiety, their fear, right, how they view money is going to be different when all of a sudden they don't get a paycheck. It's it's not easy. It's really not easy to explain, right? Well, it, it, particularly for men, Paul. I, I mean, you, look, you're you're what you like to. Call I was going to say, I am a man. I, that's right. what I thought you were going to say. No, no, no. But I'm, you're I'm recovery, a reco- recovering yes. psychologist, as right. Paul likes to say, famously says. So you appreciate men are not uh, much less insightful, and they don't like to admit or accept vulnerability or anxiety, like right. those emotions. For unco- some, so uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable. Right, right. They don't understand it. This, I'm telling you guys, like, I hope you've been listening to us for a while, and that's why we teach the classes. Your relationship with money will change. Your behaviors about what you do and how you react are going to change. And how you spend. And how you spend when someone else isn't sending you a paycheck. Right, right. It changes. You're going to be more vulnerable. And when cognitively things start to change and you start having trouble, just a little, not a lot, connecting dots. I, I, talking to mom this weekend. Paul and I are brothers, by the way, talking to mom this weekend. Yeah. And mom, I, she's sharp. Yeah. Mom is sharp. She's yeah, not yeah. losing yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I kept giving her my address and she could not keep the number straight. Right. There's so- that doesn't mean, let me be clear, it doesn't mean she has dementia. No, not it at all. It doesn't even mean that she has anything abnormal. No, it's, it's just nor- It's normal aging, right? Dude, people don't appreciate this. The first cognitive skill that most people lose is around mathematics. It's not, it's not extreme or severe that you may even notice it. It's small, it's insidious. subtle. It's insidious. It is. It's yeah. just like connecting dots have become difficult. And so anxiety is a major part of retirement and it's in that anxiety will drive help drive performance right in in fact will hurt your performance in the markets in retirement so do yourself a favor this is why the charity it's a nonprofit organization is teaching these eight-hour courses at all the major universities we're also streaming them live since covid so you can stay in your home it's a 200 page textbook all we ask is you make a $29 donation to charity, and we'll spend eight hours helping you to learn how to build and construct a retirement plan. If you'd like to register for one of our classes, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back. There's much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. We're glad you're with us here on the show. Megan Mozak, joined by Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're ready to get educated, and it is an education about what you need to plan for from modern retirement, you owe it to yourself to get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. Now, these courses are taught at local universities. They're also offered online, making it very easy, very convenient for you to take advantage They're taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. Call today to get registered, 800-240-8981, or go to the website, retirementplanningedu.com. And don't forget to follow the foundation on website. That's right. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation so you can stay up to date on everything they're doing to help you get prepared for retirement. Kirk and Paul, you talked about emotions. We are human beings, right? So emotions come into just about everything we do. And that includes how we view money, how we view our finances going into retirement. How could this be a positive and a negative or how we set ourselves up for retirement? So we'll start with, excuse me, behavioral finances is a big deal. And Paul and I do uh, have done Uh, Many shows on this topic, your emotions, your relationship with money, biases that cause us to uh, harm from particularly a performance perspective, right? So let's throw a few statistics at them and then we'll we'll show you how it impacts you even more in retirement. The S&P 500 over the last 30 years has performed just under 10%, Paul. The average actively managed mutual fund is performing at 3.98%. Not our numbers, by the way. This is these are research firms, academia, the average retail investor, you all are performing just under 3% over the last 10 years. Most driven by 
motions, also driven by fees. Now we bring in a variable of retirement. Now I am done working. There's no do-over. I can't go back to work. So you have to appreciate your relationship with money is going to change. You're going to be more vulnerable. You're going to be more anxious. It's human nature. We're telling you after helping thousands of people and teaching thousands of people, it's going to change. The problem in what's going to drive performance and success in retirement is you're going to allow short-term market events to dictate what you spend, when you spend, when you sell, your risk tolerances. You're going to let short-term events drive your decision-making for everything. And as a result, you're going to way underperform. And in many cases, people are going to outlive their money just by making the wrong mistakes because of emotions and not understanding where the risks are and having a plan. Yeah. Here's, here's another statistic that I think gets to your point. Since 1930, the market's best days, best days, have basically followed the biggest drops, right? Yeah. So what happens is the market crashes, emotions, people allow their emotions to get in the, in the way, they panic, they get anxious. Again, we're talking about in retirement when you don't have a paycheck, right? And you panic and you sell, and then the market has its best days afterwards, right? We, so it really goes back to, it's really about how do you become disciplined it's very hard to be disciplined when you don't get a paycheck, right? I I, yeah. I I have a client who just recently retired. I've been telling her this for two years, a very high-powered, successful woman who's in the business world, who retired about two months ago. She's already anxious because she didn't get her first paycheck. Okay. And she's freaking out because she, she's been working 40 years, right? 40 years, money's been coming in. Now, she doesn't understand. She has the money to live. But it's a whole different experience, isn't yeah, it? I, I think, Paul, that you, you nailed it. And I think that is a misconception when we do our radio shows sometimes. Is that, look, we're not talking to the average baby boomer, right? The average baby boomer has, and it's just the reality, they only have $200,000 saved for retirement. So we're really talking to those people who have resources, right? The people who are attending our courses, these are the most sophisticated, educated CFO, CEOs, executives, engineers, we get tons of engineers and physicians, bright people that, because I know when we say their relationship with money, they're not going to feel vulnerable. They're too sophisticated. They're well-educated. They've made a ton of money in their careers. They're great with money. Look how well I did in the market my whole life. They're, they don't think we're talking about them. They're too sophisticated to fall for that. Folks, we are talking to the most sophisticated. You're the ones, if you have $200,000 saved for retirement, there is not a lot to do. It's really pretty simple. The plan for retirement is simple. It's those of you who have resources where it gets more complicated trying to maintain a lifestyle you're accustomed to and you're not sure if you can or can't. Okay, exactly. I want to I want to clarify one thing that you said because I don't want people to mishear what you're saying. I'm concerned that people will then interpret what you're saying as, well, I'm not overly sophisticated. I'm not, you know, a CFO or an engineer. Maybe this class is too big for me. Maybe this class is too difficult. Maybe I won't fit in. Maybe it's not. So I want to make sure people understand. You don't have to have a master's degree or PhD. In fact, I think in many ways, this class is perfect for people who don't have a lot of financial experience. But what you're saying is we often get a lot of those people. And even those people, right, who think they know it all, right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, that that's the most most of the people that come yeah. that, that do it yourself first because yeah. they they want to expand their knowledge base and you know they come in thinking they know things mm -hmm. and they do they and know, they do they know a lot yeah, about smart. accumulating their wealth. That's right. That's they right. have zero clue about what it's going to take to drive success and performance in retirement. In but fact, they think most they do. of them they think but they think, do and they think they're going to use the same strategies and it's going to work. And most of them will way underspend what they otherwise could spend. I say it all the time. Old people aren't cheap. They're scared. And it's the people that never thought they would be scared who are most scared because you have a different lifestyle. You've, you've accumulated wealth and you have no idea what that wealth can do you for you. You know the 4% rule. That is a waste. You're going to way underspend what you should be spending. If you got a million, two, three, four, five, ten million dollars, you don't need to live on a 4% rule. That's crazy. Uh, you don't need to protect your principal. You can spend down your principal. So the things that are going to drive your performance and success in retirement, you aren't even familiar with yet. You just don't because our industry ignores it because it requires a lot of advanced planning, tax planning, something called sequence of return income planning. They don't want to touch. 
It's sophisticated. It's complicated. And so this is why we started teaching the classes. Look, it's eight hours. We go advanced into how to construct a retirement plan, teaching you where the traps are and how to avoid the mistakes and how to maximize your income, right? That's what it's about, how to drive the performance and quality of life in retirement. Eight hours, 200-page textbook. We do ask, you have to make a $29 donation, but folks, that is a really small ask to get eight hours, 200-page textbook in a university setting. We're teaching in universities and we're streaming it live so you can do it in the comforts of your home. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. There's much more on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Glad to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to register for one of their upcoming courses, and you can do that two ways. You can either go online to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call, if you'd like to get registered, 800 240 8981. Again, 800 240 8981. And don't forget, you can attend these courses in person. You can choose from a one day or a two day course. But we also make it very convenient for you to attend the courses online. So when you register, you can choose your preference. And again, these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus and Oakland University. We're talking about strategies today, strategies to help you be more successful in the market. Now that's got my attention. One of the things we're talking about, Kirk and Paul, is this idea that we're human and our emotions are inevitable, right? They're gonna get involved. What I wanna know from the two of you is, what are some of the things to counteract (laughs) our emotions so we can make some really good, smart decisions around our investments in the market? Well, Megan, I think it, it So for today's discussion, we're focusing on those people within 10 years of retirement or in retirement. And that starts by, to manage your motion, it starts by uh, understanding, uh, having a plan, right? Education and, and a plan will help you manage your emotions. And that plan needs to be very specific from where am I taking my money from when we have market events. So to not cause a risk we're going to talk about next seg- next segment, which is sequence of return risk. It also helps you to be a more disciplined investor. If you know you have a bucket that you can go to, I know buckets are simple, but let's just think of buckets. If I have a bucket of money that I can go to, that I can pivot to when we have major market events that is not exposed to market risk or very s- Uh, limited exposure to market risk that is going to help me meet most of my fixed cost, whether it's my social security pensions, whether it's a, a very, very low volatility, conservative bucket of money in the, in the market. And and that isn't easy to do. We talk about it in the class. We can teach you at the class or some insured income, whatever it is. As long as you're satisfying your fixed costs and you have a place to pivot to when we have market events, this is going to prevent our emotions to panic when we're most vulnerable in retirement to not sell at the wrong times. Paul's nailed it. The best time in the market is right after a crash. Every always, we just saw it again in COVID. If you miss 30 of the best days in the last 20 years, you have a negative return. You can't be out of the markets. So what's going to drive the performance is knowing where to go to when we have market events to create the income. By the way, did you notice I didn't say, Paul, don't reduce your income when we have market events. Don't stop taking income when we have market events because you're going to do that 7, 12 times throughout retirement. That's going to be a, a crappy retirement. <laughs> it's going to be horrible retirement if, if every time you have a market event, you just stop spending or reduce your spending. That's what we're trying to prevent. Right, right. So really the key ultimately to be successful in the market of retirement is to make sure that, you know, you have some monies to, that basically drive your income that have no market volatility. You got right? it. Or, it, or or at least a place you can pivot to. If you, if you need it to, right? Yeah, when the market and, event happens. And, and, and simply knowing that, even if you never actually have to do it, 
simply having the knowledge that you you, you have that set aside oh, yes. gives you enough confidence and peace of mind that that anxiety just goes down significantly. And then you're going to enjoy, you're going to spend, you're going to do things you want. If you don't have that, you're going to worry, oh my God, what if the market crashes, right? Well, that goes to something we talk about in the class, right? It's, it's a lot about teaching you, you how you have served your money your whole life. And retirement is about letting money serve you. And if you have that, if you have that plan, and, and we teach this in the class, how to construct this plan. But if you have a place you can pivot to during market events that doesn't create anxiety, panic, force you to sell or reduce your income, you will learn how to let money serve you. Unfortunately, most people don't have that type of plan. They think they do, but they don't. As a result, they're continuing to serve money. So they either underspend what they otherwise could spend. They sh reduce their spending based upon short-term market events or who's being elected or who's being impeached or whatever's going on. And they allow our emotions to drive. And when we let our emotions drive our investments in our man and managing of our investments, you're going to lose. It's every so it's, time. So it's, it's, almost, it's almost paradoxical because in some ways what we're saying is you need some monies – that are that are really set aside that you may not be you know getting five six seven eight ten percent returns right, but money is set aside that have very low volatility, and the paradox is if you have that the money that you are that is exposed to high risk is actually going to do better much because, better because you're not going to overreact and panic and then in the long run your performance in the market will be that much greater. Because you didn't allow anxiety to interfere with your buying and selling. And Paul, that's the disconnect, right? Everyone who yeah, has totally. made some wealth yeah. have been willing to take risk in the market and have been serving money, growth, growth, growth. Right. And they think that mentality, and they don't believe that they're going to have this behavior where the relationship with money changes. So they think they're going to be able to, they don't understand that if if you don't have that bucket of money, whatever it is that you can pivot to during times of market events, there's if you have a market event early in retirement, your chances of outliving increase by 75%. That's the fact. Perform, it's, performance is directly driven by something called sequence return risk. It's the number one risk to retirees. It's the number one risk to your retirement. It's something we talk about every show, and we spend almost an hour in our class teaching. Some money that is not dry, built upon growth, and I'm not talking about a 60-40 allocation. That isn't, your, your, your bonds aren't going to be the place, guys. Over the next 10 years, go look at every major firm out there is telling you your 60-40 allocation, bonds, stocks, is going to perform in 3% or less over the next 10 years. Interest rates are super low, and when interest rates go up, your bonds are going to get crushed. That isn't the pivot place. You've got to understand how and when to take income from which accounts at what age to minimize taxes and minimize sequence of return risk, and you will drive performance. You will have better growth. Sometimes less risk, minimizing that sequence of return with will drive bigger growth. And this is some of the things we're teaching in this eight-hour course taught at all the major universities. To attend this class, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And you can register right at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. And we will continue with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Happy to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, and we're glad you tuned in as well. We talk about retirement planning and all, all that you need to be educated on to have a successful retirement here in the 21st century. It does take a lot, and this is why the foundation offers courses throughout the year so that you can get educated. You can feel more confident as you move into this next phase of life. We want you to get excited about retirement. You've worked so hard. You deserve a great retirement. We want to help you get there. Now, Kirk and Paul, of course, are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And if you'd like to register for one of their courses taught at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University, you can call today, 800-240-8981. Don't forget, these courses are also offered online. So you can, you can learn in the comfort of your own home 
You can also go online to register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. We're talking about success in the markets, how you can have some strategies here in hand to help you be more successful, especially when we see the ups and downs on Wall Street. Kirk and Paul, I want to talk about something that we hear a lot about, but I would wager not many of us could explain this very well, but it's important. It's called sequence of return risk. Let's start with what it is. So sequence of return risk is really, it's the number one risk to a retiree's retirement, literally. Look, and I'll give you a statistic and then I'll explain to you what it is. The statistic is if we have a a market event in the first five years of retirement, the chances of you outliving your money increase by 75%. And sequence of return risk means when are we taking income out of investments that are going up and going down? And the problem is, is if we take income to live on, right? Because we're going to be retired. So I need to pull money out of these investments to live on. And if we take it out of investments when the market is going down, not a little, it does. I mean, not a lot. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a little. If we're pulling money out to live on when the market is going down a little bit, it compounds our losses. And then we're going to have less and fewer shares to recover from. This is why average rate of return is totally irrelevant. If I'll give you an example. If your portfolio is down 31%, now it doesn't just have to be down because of market volatility, you could have pulled income. So let's say we had a first year, we had a little bit of a, a, a recession. The market was down 23%, and then you took out 5% to live on. Now your portfolio is 28% down, right? And then the next year, we had a zero return. The market was flat. And then you took another 5% to live on. Now I'm, what, 33? 33% behind. It takes us 51% to break back even. You're never going to get there if you continue to pull money out of this account. That is what sequence of return risk. It's the dirty secret the financial service industry totally ignores. And academia, academia has been screaming. You know, it's, it, from the top of the roofs. Right. This is a problem for baby boomers. This is the number one risk. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, no, you know, we all love compound interest, right? We do. The, the, the power of compound interest is huge when it's w w when it's positive, right? We when the accounts are going up, compound interest is very positive. What you're talking about is how do we avoid negative compound interest in a declining market, right? Yes. Because it's it, it, as powerful as it is when we make when we're making money, it's equally powerful when the market's declining and we're pulling money out. Paul, we show tons of examples in the class. We spent a lot of time on this topic, but one example is two people invested in the S&P 500 retiring one year apart with the same amount of money. They retire with the same amount of money. They're going to withdraw the same amount of money. Literally 5% a year, that's what they're pulling out. Identical. Everything's the same. Please hear us. Hear what I'm saying. They start with the same amount of money. They're invested in the same investments. The only difference is one retired one year earlier and the other one retired one year later. That was it. The result was the one that retired one year earlier ran out of money at 84 years old, Paul. The one that retired one year later had $1.2 million left still at 94 years old when they died. One year difference. Average rate of return. You show, I can show you how average rate of return, you can have a 10% average rate of return, take out 5% a year, and you run out of money in 17 years. Tell me what the market does early, and that will determine whether you outlive your money or not. And, Paul, the risk is what happens at 72 years old? Do you have a choice? Right, you don't. You, you can't just say I'm not going to take money, right? You have to take your required minimum distributions. So, again, if we're pulling our RMDs out of the market that is exposed to risk, you are compounding those losses and – you're creating a sequence of return issue. Yeah. It, it, this connects to the previous segment because at the end, I'm thinking as we're talking, great, but how do I solve this, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I, I don't get to decide whether the market's, I mean, I may retire today and how do I know that in the next year the market's going to go down? And if you're telling me it's a 75% chance that I'm going to run out of money if I'm taking money out of a out of a market that's going down and I can't control whether the market's going down, this goes back to the previous segment. How do we in improve performance? The pivot. We got to pivot. That's that's right. The pivot is you have to have accounts that are not exposed to market risk or really minimized market risk, right? So you have to have 
a bucket of money that is going to meet most of your fixed costs that is not exposed to the market. Social Security, pensions, maybe some insured. Some people say cash, by the way. So, so, I hear that. I, I, cash is, is a huge – I know people do that, and, and it'll work. But it's, the you, le- it's least desirable. It's least desirable. It's going to significantly reduce the amount of money you can take out and live on. Right. You're going to underlive what you otherwise could be living on if you use cash as a solution. Really, really, really short – duration individual bonds that we can manage can help that bucket too there are strategies but paul it comes back to the plan right a plan and you guys don't know what a plan is i promise you you have never seen a retirement plan what you are sh- being shown by the professionals out there is a is not a true comprehensive 30-year retirement plan showing you when to take income from which accounts at what age where to pivot, when to pivot, how to minimize taxes so to increase your cash flow and reduce sequence of return risk. The last segment today, we're going to talk about planning. Stick around for that segment and you'll hear it. At the end of the day, there's only so much we can cover in an eight-minute segment in a radio show without visual aids. We started the Nonprofit Retirement Education Foundation, and we teach these eight-hour courses at all the major universities around Michigan. We're streaming it live. We started doing it COVID, and people love it. You can stay in the comforts of your own home. We'll send you your 200-page textbook. If you're within 10 years of retirement, you want to attend, or in retirement, you want to attend this course. It's a $29 donation charity. That's all you have to do. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, straight ahead. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're ready to get educated, if you know that there's a lot to learn about retirement planning and you're ready to do that, I want to encourage you to sign up for the foundation's courses. These are taught all throughout the year very conveniently located at different universities right here in our community, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. And here's some great news. You can also take these courses in the comfort of your own home. That's right. They are also taught online. So it's your choice. And you can call to get registered or go online. Here is the phone number. It's 800 240 8981 or register by going to retirementplanningedu.com. If you're on Facebook, make sure you follow the foundation. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation so you can be up to date on everything they're doing to help you gain confidence for retirement. We've been talking today with Kirk and Paul about how to be more successful in the market, especially if retirement is on the horizon for you, what are some other things, Kirk and Paul, that can help our performance in the market? Well, there is this age-old debate, right, Paul, about passive versus active investing and those who try to time markets uh, versus buy and hold, right? Right. And so anyone that's been listening to us for a long time knows that we are, and fortunately, the data supports this. All research, all studies will give examples, support our position. And the reason why the financial service industry doesn't support our industry, our position is because it's not in their best interest. You know, here we are, financial, we have our own private practices. We come on the radio on behalf of the charity, the foundation, as instructors. But we're the first one to tell you that it, it doesn't, it's, there's no rocket science. It's not from the investment perspective. It's not voodoo. There's no secret sauce. I don't know anything more than, you know, anyone that, that's been managing money for a while. It's really, it's, we very strongly believe in buy and hold, passive investing, just buying major indices, not buying mutual funds that are incredibly expensive, not trying to stock pick or market time. You can't, by the way, look, the Day Traders Hall of Fame is empty for a reason because nobody wins. The best of the best Kramer, he's on TV, he's famous hedge fund manager. He has teams of people doing research, trying to track, to stock pick and market time. He's got every CFO and major CFO and CEO on speed dial on his phone that he can talk to. And 
Kramer has underperformed the S&P 500 by over 100% since 2000, the year 2000, over the last 20 years. The best of the best can't keep up, right? So it's, Paul, you can talk about, it's not the stock picking and market timing isn't, it's portfolio management. And the timing is when do you take income from which account at which age? The only timing that needs to be done is the pivot to going to the accounts when we have market volatility, not selling what you own. Just having the place to go to when we have bad market events. Did, Kirk, did you see the statistic here? Did you? Uh, about, were, I mean, I, 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 you know, in terms of the S and P in the last since I think it was 1930. I mean, did you see that? No. Basically, going back to 1930, if an investor missed the S and P's 10 best days each decade, the total return would be 28 percent. Okay, people sound like doesn't sound bad, but if the investor held steady through the ups and downs. The return would have been 17,715%. Oh, my God. I mean, think about wait, that. Wait, wait, 17,000% versus 28% just right. by missing 10 of the best days per decade. If you just, ex- I mean, that's, I mean, that blew, when I read that blew my mind. 17. I mean, if that does not convince you. There isn't a study out there that will, uh, that argues this point. Right, right. Every study says buy, hold, major indices. Don't stock pick. Look, we've done this dance, right, Paul? If you look at the top five holdings of the S&P 500 in 1980, three of them were energy. Energy was 33% of the S&P 500. It's now 3%. If we do the same thing in 2000, if you currently bought, if you bought in 2000 the five top holdings of the S&P 500 and said, these are the best companies. I'm going to buy this and hold it. Just those five. That's it. You would have a negative return today, right now. Right. You'd have a negative return over the 20 years. Right. You can't do that. It can, can it's, I, not that it's not that complicated. Can, can I add one more thing to this? Please. But part of the problem, Kirk, right, with with p- trying to time this, right, is you, you it's, it's easy to figure out when to go out, right? The pandemic hits, the market down 30%, get out, right? Now, when do you go back in? When do you? When are you confident enough that the market's going back? That go back in? And typically, what do we? What What do people typically do? So they. So again, the industry does not promote this and explain this, but read the research. The research will tell you the best days in the market are the days just following the crash. Always, right. every it's always been right. I and mean, we had the best fifty day run in history after COVID. We had the best. I don't know. Was it six month run after the financial crisis? It's, it's, listen, folks, <laughs> I, I know we're really breaking some hearts. Some people really spend a lot of time Research, doing research. researching and, and, and it helps the ego, right? The confidence. No, I'm smart. I, I got it. You can't, you, you can't stock pick or market time your way to success in retirement. And just, just remember, this will be the first time you ever plan for retirement and you're not working. Like you play the game when you're younger and someone else is paying you a paycheck every month. What's the worst that happens? Oh, you got to work a few extra years, a little longer, or save more if you make bad judgment. You do that in your retirement, there's no going back work. There's no fixing this problem. This is the first time you'll ever do it. And I just, I always say this, Paul, I don't understand. You're not going to the surgeon or doing your own orthopedic knee surgery. You're not going to the surgeon that's done it once. You're going to go to the person that's done it thousands of times. Why do you treat your own financial health differently than you treat your own health, physical, physical health. health. Why? Why? Because of ego? Is it anxiety or no? no you, said, you said why? Because many of these people have been successful financially during the accumulate while they're working, and they just assume naturally it will continue. And, and when people the leave the class, Paul, I mean, these are very affluent, successful people leave the class that have done really well financially, and they walk away and say, I cannot believe how little I understood about the differences in retirement, in distributing my wealth, creating income from my wealth versus accumulating wealth. It's not the investment. That is like fourth or fifth on the list of important things that we do. It's all about your income planning. When, how, from what accounts, how do I minimize taxes? How do I protect my surviving spouse? How do I leave it to the heirs the best way? How do I not underlive my money? I know everyone's fearful of outliving their money. How about don't underlive your money? This is why we teach all these courses at all the major universities. They're eight-hour courses. It costs $29. It's a donation that goes to charity. If you'd like to register for one of our courses, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. 
Great to be back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We want to help you get educated for retirement. Make sure that you head over to the website or call the phone number so that you can take advantage of these courses that the foundation sponsors. You can call 800-240-8981. Or register at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Fascinating topic today as we're talking about helping you be more successful in the market for retirement. We covered a lot, right? From sequence of returns risk to not allowing your emotions to dictate how you're invested. But Kirk and Paul, you always say it comes back to a plan, right? Well, it does, Megan, because the plan, you had mentioned something earlier about confidence, right? And so people discount. They don't understand the, again, that emotional, uh, that relationship with money and the anxiety they're going to feel as they age, as cognitively things change, as no one else is paying you an income, a paycheck every, uh, every month, you have to pay yourself. That freedom comes from a plan knowing that you're not going to outlive your money, that you know where to pivot, what accounts to go to when we have recessions that you're going to have in retirement. Throughout retirement, you likely will experience, I don't know, three to five different recessions, five to 10 different market events, and how many elections that people don't like the outcomes of. It's going to happen, right? So the only way to get the freedom to continue to spend Make sure you don't outlive your money and make sure you don't underlive what you otherwise could be living, which is more common for the people who tend to come to our class, is the plan. Having a plan. Yes. Now, I just want to say one thing. I don't like to bring psychology in this, but let me just say one thing. This is in some ways basic psychology, right? When we try to understand anxiety, what drives anxiety, the single greatest thing that drives anxiety is not known, is the unknown, Right. At the end of the day, the unknown, the more, the, the less we can control things, the less we understand things, the more anxious we're going to be. It's basic psychology, right? Planning removes all of that because the plan tells you over the next 30 years what you're going to do. And where do you go when you have right. an event, right? Where, what will happen when one spouse dies? See, your plan needs to summarize that too. There has to be a plan today for when you die for your surviving spouse because it could happen in five days. It could happen in... 20, 20 years, years. right <laughs> jinx right, right? so it, it, that's the point you don't know you think you always people think they have this control when you die when you're going to retire like you're going to always decide it's this it's a great point I, right? right right people do think people think that they can control everything they do right. and uh, we'll we'll have a feeling i'll get sick then we can plan no you got to plan now right so that's the purpose of the class it maps out we constantly say this it maps out for 30 years account by account Pension, Social Security, every major financial decision. It maps out for 30 years. When do I take income from which accounts at what age to minimize taxes? Folks, taxes is such a big deal. The amount of money you can save in taxes by just knowing when to take the right amounts from the right accounts to not bump brackets, to minimize the cost of Medicare, to protect the surviving spouse from a tax perspective. There's so many variables there. Mapping that out and then mapping out when you're taking income from which accounts to eliminate sequence of return risk. Where do I pivot? When do I pivot? Gives you, that's that's a plan. And it, it's 30 years. It, I can tell you in our private practice, it takes us 40 to 50 hours to build that plan. It takes us eight hours to walk you through how to design and what a plan looks like. And Paul, I think one of the more important parts of the class, because so many of the people that come to our class are do-it-yourselfers that have million plus, that's very common who come to our class. After they're done with the class, they realize, yeah, no, I I, I do need to get help. And if I get the right help, it doesn't cost me more. It costs me less. If I do get help, I'm less anxious because I'm going to be in more control. They think if they get help, they're losing control. No, you're getting more control of your retirement and more confident to be able to enjoy your retirement. And and go ahead, Paul, because I want to make sure I get one really important. I was just going to say part of the class is actually teaching people how to find that person, that professional who actually can help you because for for the average consumer, it's so confusing. All these letters after people's names and noise. noise. How do I know? How do I know? Fiduciary, not fiduciary. How do I know who to believe? Paul nailed it. That is the last section of the class that we spend quite a bit of time is how do you choose an advisor? How do you do a background check? How do they get paid? How do you read between the lines? Because this industry is about creating a perception 
That isn't always reality. The fees, folks, is such a big piece. It's always been a big piece, but even more of a piece. Think about sequence of return risk. Think about being forced to take money out of your investments when the market's down. Well, that doesn't just mean your income. It's also the fees that are being charged on your accounts, whether it's your mutual funds. Yes, folks, you don't know all the fees associated with your mutual funds. I don't care how sophisticated you are. I promise you the average actively managed mutual fund, you're paying between one and a half and two and a half percent per year in fees, plus your advisor fees if you're not doing it yourself. So we're going to teach you how to get rid of all those fees associated with the mutual funds. You're not going to use mutual funds when you're done with our class. We're going to show you other ways to invest without using mutual funds in the market. And then how do you choose the right advisor to charge the least amount of fees? And if you get the right advisor, they should be saving you tons of money in taxes. Fees should not be an issue. Reducing the amount that has to come out of your portfolios every year for fees and income reducing that sequence of return risk. Yeah, really, I I think this section on how to find an advisor, in some ways, for many people, is, I wouldn't say the most important, but it's hugely important because oftentimes people say, I don't know what to do. This is great information. I can't do this myself. There's no way. How do I find somebody? Yeah, and that's why, so guys. So how do you come to the class? All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. It's an eight-hour course taught at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, the Novi, and Troy Campus, Oakland University. We're also teaching in our learning center in Livonia and streaming it so you can stay in your home if you want to. It's eight hours, 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.